Okay, so this video is why won't people interview me? Okay, because I just had a viewer ask me this question. How come, you know, somebody won't interview this? In this case, Rip Esselstyn won't interview me. And in my experience, most people won't interview me. They, for a lot of reasons, and I'll just go through them with you. I think part of it, I think it's funny and part of it's sad. Part of it's just life, okay? First of all, I'm a good speaker. I know a lot. And I think some of them are afraid I'm going to steal their audience away from them. You know, which probably not. I never have. I mean... People can go wherever they want. I'm not, uh, but anyways, I think that's why some of them don't because they're kind of intimidated by me intellectually. Intellectually, I am kind of intimidating in real life too, you know. I wasn't just first in my class and one of the best students in the whole United States. And, you know, when I look at a conventional medical book, a typical doctor barely knows what's in there just enough to do their job. You know, I, I not only was first in my class, I know that book backwards and forwards and I think it's a joke. I laugh at conventional medical textbooks. They're wrong on all the major subjects. Coronary artery disease, diabetes, hypertension, you name it. Uh, my goal is to try to become the best doctor in the world, and I think I'm close, I and mean, if not already there, and you know, how could I be so confident? The reality is because no one cares about the proles. The proles, you know, patients, you have no money. There's nothing you could do for a doctor, really. Um, the insurance company pays the bill, not the patient. So what I'm trying to say is, you make Big Pharma happy, you get money. You make your hospital happy, you generate money for them, you get money. You make the insurance companies happy, you get money. The patient doesn't really matter in clinical conventional medicine in the sense that almost no one follows outcomes. And the reason they'll never follow outcomes is because if you followed outcomes and somebody started treating with the vegan diet, they would get better results, okay? And eventually that would make the drugs look bad. So there's no incentive to follow outcomes. And the significance of not following outcomes means nobody knows who's a better doctor because no one has a record. What I'm talking about, for example, imagine you talk about a sports team. You'll say that, you know, Michael Jordan was the best player because he scores the most points and his team, team wins the championship or Magic Johnson or something, okay? Whatever. The team wins. But in medicine, nobody knows the doctor's win-loss record because it's not kept track of. And then what I'm trying to say is the reason why it's easy to become one of the better doctors for the proles, you know, helping the people out there, so to speak, is because no one cares. There's no incentive to try to help the patient. The person who's the best doctor in a private practice hospital is the doctor who makes the most money for the hospital. The person who's considered the best doctor in a university hospital is the one who publishes the most paper. There is no one that cares about how many patients get better. No one cares about that. As bizarre as that sounds, that's the truth. I'm not aware of any place where people actually care about the patients getting better, okay? Somebody might care when they're doing a research study, but I've never in my entire medical career seen a single place that kept track of who gets better. That's considered. Everyone practices the standard of care, and whatever happens, happens. That's, that's how it is. So what I'm trying to say is, there's no one trying to count their, 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 their patients healed, okay? You'll hear McDougal say 90% of his patients, and the same thing with Pritikin, came off his antihypertensions. You know, you look at the work of um, Kepner publishing his outcomes. That's the way it should be. People should be showing. But they'll, it'll never go down that path because it would lead to everybody going low-fat, low-sodium vegan, okay? And that's not going to happen in the big pharma-controlled medical world of conventional medicine. Okay, the next thing is, I'm the most austere vegan out there. I'm the Spartan vegan, okay? Uh, the brain's fussier than the heart. Most of these guys, they all go by the heart. You know, are we keeping the coronary arteries open? Cobalescent, for example, okay? You know, cobalescent is great. Okay, but that's what he cares about, keeping the arteries of the heart open, keeping the patient alive, no recurrent coronary artery events. I'm interested in the brain, okay? The brain's way more fussy. The brain carries about, cares about stimulants. It cares about circuit inhibitors. It cares about all kinds of these little detailed things. So... What does that mean? Because, well, for example, I recommend only eat organic food because I'm concerned about glyphosate. I'm concerned about atrazine. Those are two commonly used herbicides on non-organic food, so I won't eat that stuff. But lots of people, uh, they don't want to make a distinction between organic and non-organic. So what I'm trying to say is I'm fussy. As far as they're concerned, I'm a pain in the ass, okay? So they don't want somebody like me around. They're afraid I'll either criticize this thing, which I would never criticize anything of my interviewer, but they're afraid that people then come to my YouTube channel and hear me criticizing or non-organic food or all these things, MSG, caffeine, soy, or something they sell. Tons of people are selling omega-3s or something else. And there's tons of industry-funded uh, so-called research in the last you know 20 years or so just trying to promote products, and it's bogus, okay? But a lot of people will quote that and go, oh, no, this is backed by science. Olive oil is good for you or some other nonsense, okay? And they'll exaggerate the benefit of nuts, etc. cetera. Um, so that's another thing. I, I'm sort of, you know, quite frankly, the bad boy of nutrition simply because it's a hobby for me. It's not a business. When it's a business, you don't want to piss people off. You piss people off, you know, you piss off Big Farmer. They'll send a troll to mess with your YouTube channel. Um, you're not going to make progress. The way you make progress as a businessman, get along with everybody, be real nice, you know, friendly handshake, yes, yes. 
Whereas, you know, I just do this as a hobby and I try to make it the best thing. I want to make, I realize I could never really be popular, but I'll try to make it, you know, like a beautiful work of art. I think I can make it the best health website in the world. And I already think it's one of them. There's a couple other great ones too, of course. Um, so it's just how it is. I don't think I could change that. I can't change who I am, what I am. And I think what I am is good, but it ain't popular. Um, I talk about taboo stuff. Okay, I talk about F minus in the water. I talk about soy. I talk about caffeine. I got kicked out of Facebook group for telling the truth about soy. Caffeine, coffee, tea, it's all bad. Glyphosate, non-organic stuff is all bad. Uh, no good fats, that's all nonsense. Olive oil, nonsense. Fish oil, nonsense. Problems with all the EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals, and a whole bunch of other stuff like that. So that doesn't make you popular when you tell the truth, of when you tell negative stuff about popular stuff. Um, also, I talk about Christianity on my YouTube channel quite a bit, and simply because the modern world is trending into uh, slavery, okay? And most people are just kind of clueless idiots, okay? For example, the, the border are wide open. That is being used to destroy Ireland. That is being used to destroy France. That is being used to destroy this country, okay? And if anybody tries to say something about it, they go, oh, you're racist, okay? Like the magic word to make you have to surrender. You know what? I'm a Puerto Rican. I'm half Puerto Rican, okay? And I can tell you this. The Puerto Ricans don't want America destroyed. Nobody wants America destroyed. The Hispanic people that live here, they don't want America destroyed. There's no country that can survive having a wide open border for a prolonged amount of time. And it's not like, you know, if you want to have a border, you should let the people come in that, you know, let's say you have a need in a job. You have a shortage of electrical engineers. Well, then have some electrical engineers from another country come in and give them a job. That's great. But a wide open border in a country where there's massive unemployment, there's going to be, you know, there's tons of people that can't get enough to eat. There's tons of homeless people. So you want ongoing massive immigration, mostly of military age men, many of whom don't like this country. I mean, that's insane. And I think the big goal of it is to combine us with uh, Mexico and Canada. I see that's what's coming. Um, it's going to be called a union of those three places. I think that's what's coming. And I think freedom, free speech, and all that stuff is going down into the tubes. So that's not good. And what could prevent it? I mean, maintain the Constitution, Christianity, and capitalism that's not rigged. You know, laissez-faire capitalism. Those are where freedom and prosperity come from. And I'm old, okay? I know I look young, but I'm 60 years old, okay? Just about 60. And so um, I've been around. I remember when America was rich. I remember, you know, I have friends who... Doctors, the same doctors now who are making, let's say, 150000 a year, I know their compatriots who were making the equivalent of a million a year back when I was young, okay? And, you know, maybe that's too much, but what I'm trying to say is the amount of wealth in this country is dropped like this for the American public. It's shocking. Like I said, all my friends' moms I thought were ugly except for one, and they were all married, living in nice homes, living high on the hog. All my friends, every single one of them got a new car just about when they hit 16. It was it was normal. It was routine. Uh, people all had their houses paid off easily when I was young. Okay, so anyways, um, you know, like I said, I'm half Irish and half Puerto Rican. Like, the Irish are sort of like the scum of Europe, you know, the slaves of the British for a thousand years. You know, the Puerto Ricans are kind of like the lowlifes of the Hispanic world. So I don't have any connections. You know, I don't have any, like big funding purpose, you know, somebody say, well, gee, we're proud of you. We got a Puerto Rican genius. Let's help him out. No, nobody gives a, sh a rat's tail about me. Um, and also being smart in medicine, it don't get you anywhere because there's, you know, what does it take to do a doctor's job? Average IQ is about 120 to 125. You show up, you generate your billing codes, you go home, okay? You know, anything beyond that, intelligence beyond that, what the hell is it good for? If it's not generating money, no one cares about it. So, it doesn't really get you much, you know. And in some ways, like I said, I was disappointed. You know, when I was an athlete, everybody likes a good athlete. The men, the women, the coaches, the team, everybody, the fans. But when you're in academics, or like in medical academics is the worst, no one gives a shit. Just generate your billing codes, make your money, get the hell out of here, keep your mouth shut. There's no, no one cares about the patient. And so if you if you push all this, it's simply a hobby. I just do this a hobby. I don't make, you know, I don't make any money from this. So what I'm trying to say is I don't fit the, the standard fit pattern, okay, also, you know, now in the modern world, it's almost like you, you gain social points, you know, your credit score for, for being a wuss, okay? I mean, you know, I'm an ex-wrestler, okay? I don't believe in all this stupid, you know, men behaving like women. I don't, I don't believe in, uh, you know, I'm pro-family. I love the family, okay? I, you know, I think that I saw the happiness of my parents, you know, the happiness of my own life. And I think we got to respect our traditions, okay? Western civilization has produced magnificent art, magnificent music, magnificent um, uh, 
architecture, all kinds of beautiful, wonderful things in the literature. It's magnificent. And I'm quite familiar with it going all the way back to the ancient Greeks and more, you know, the Bible, okay? So what I'm trying to say is what people don't understand is these modern trends, um, they're very much anti-Christianity, anti-Western civilization, and their real goal is to bring back slavery and loss of free speech and turn the United States into a third world country. And I don't want that. I don't think anybody who understands what's going on wants that, okay? So, and I'm not going to, you know, so what if your coronaries are open and you have an ideal body weight if you're a slave? I don't want to be a slave. And I think you can't ignore talking about that. But some people don't like that. You know, they want you to say, oh, there's no difference between men and women. No, there's a lot of differences between men and women. And everybody knows that. Is your mother like your father? Is your sister like your brother? Okay. Is your daughter like your son? No, they're all different. You know, that's part of what makes it interesting. Um, so anyways, I think it scares people a little bit to have somebody like me who just tells the truth openly and honestly, says what he thinks, you know. Um, and, you know, people think, you know, America should just open up its border and just let itself fade away and dissolve into becoming a third world crap hole. I don't want that to happen. And I think all men should speak up and say something about that because otherwise, if we don't speak up about it, it's going to happen. The trend is all in that direction. Um, so, you know, and, and so, so what I'm basically trying to say is, you look at the types of guys that basically say America should just let itself design and dissolve and fade into oblivion, you know, and they believe every stupid new psyop trend that comes along, you know, like global, you know, the weather variation is caused by our farts. Give me a break, okay? Um, so I, I don't go for it, okay? And I'm not very impressed by conventional wisdom, so-called conventional experts or conventional textbooks. I know that 99% of it's BS. So all of those things make me, I think, a good person to teach and explain things because I know a lot, I'll tell you the truth. But on the other hand, it makes me kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, the average person's kind of scared conformist wimp, okay? They're, they're nervous about having me, someone like me interviewed, but somebody who really wants to get to the truth and I'll push it. I'll read 12 hours a day, to, day after day after day till I figure something out if I'm interested in it. Uh, so anyways, that's why I hardly ever get interviewed by anybody. <laughs> and that's why, you know, I got like what average couple of, you know, hundred views for my videos instead of you go to some lying idiot who doesn't know anything promoting keto, paleo, carnivore, or some BS high fat veganism, they'll have hundreds of thousands or millions of views. So, you know, in life you do what you can. And so my goal is to try to be the best I can be. And I have accepted the fate already. I'll never be sort of like the popular type because... I am what I am. So anyways, there it is.